over in Mingus Union High School. I'm Jackie Bessler on Verde Valley TV, Cable 1, Channel 2, Sudden Link, Cable Channel 4. And out here today, it is Power Division 2 Basketball through Parks and Rec, Cottonwood Parks and Rec, Power Division 2 Basketball. This is our second game, and uh, this is 12, 13, and 14-year-old boys. And uh, some stout competition out here today. As uh, for this game, it is going to be the Ducks going against the Sun Devils. Well, the Ducks are... Uh, Let's see, coached by Ivan Anderson, and we'll take a look at the Ducks here on the screen as we can go through and uh, introduce you, if we can, Carson Anderson, as well as uh, Matthew Bockler, Cameron Blinares, uh, Josh Connors, Alexis Gill, Kyle Houston's not going to be with us here today, but he is uh, also on the Ducks team. Keegan Lamb and uh, Jordan May, and that rounds out the Ducks. They are 3-2 and uh, two on the season. They will be taking on the Sun Devils. Yep, these are Pac-10 names, so it's going to be, uh, well, a Pac-12 name. Oh, sorry, correct myself. Sean Rutledge is the coach of the Sun Devils here for Cottonwood Parks and Rec Division II uh, Boys Basketball. Let's go ahead and take a look at the roster for the Sun Devils, Daniel Kinez, Cody Hammer-Jackson, Christian Lazaro, Mitchell Lindsay, Marky Lopez, Travis Nestor, as well as uh, Nolan Powell, Ruben Quiros, Christian Sandoval, and Eric Wakefield uh, will round out the Sun Devils for us here today. We're going to take a little break. We're going to return to Mingus Union High School. I want to thank Mingus Union High School for letting us have the facility for our broadcast here today. If you like what you see, don't forget there is a second game between um, the Jayhawks and the Wildcats. They can also be viewed right here on Verde Valley TV for a copy of either. You can also email Ryan at my radio place.com Ryan at MyRadioPlace.com In the meantime, we're going to take a quick little break. Get ready for this afternoon's game here. The Ducks and the Sun Devils for Power Division 2 Basketball. The Cottonwood Recreation Center is proudly operated by the Cottonwood Parks and Recreation Department. The Rec Center offers a full fitness center, gymnasium, game room, climbing wall, and an indoor pool featuring a water slide and lazy river. The Recreation Center has child care services for members. There are party and community meeting rooms available for rent to the public. Visit the Cottonwood Recreation Center today or call 639-3200. Service, convenience, price. Hi, I'm Tandy Taylor. Taylor Waste is locally owned and voted number one in residential garbage collection for the past seven years in a row. Ask about the convenience of curbside recycling for the Cottonwood and Verde Santa Fe areas. And right now, new customers will enjoy two months free service with your switch to Taylor Waste. Hi, I'm Chris Taylor at Taylor Waste. We're proud to serve our friends and neighbors with service tailored to your needs. Hi, this is Travis Reed from Larry Green Chevrolet and Hyundai of Cottonwood. We're known as the People Place, and whether it's our involvement in the community or our customers that visit our dealership, we make it a priority to keep that reputation. If you're in the market for a new or pre-owned car, truck, van, or SUV, you'll find that we have the largest selection of new and pre-owned vehicles around, and our sales team is professional and courteous. Visit Larry Green Chevrolet and Hyundai of Cottonwood, two dealerships, one convenient location, just off Highway 260 next to Walmart in Cottonwood. Back here at Mingus Junior High School, Jackie Bessler along with you, Jason Little, to my left here with uh, Parks and Rec, and well, welcome aboard. Thanks, Jackie, for having us. Well, this has been fun. We've uh, we've done one Power Division Two game, but we're not going to tell the score so that they still have to catch that game on a rebroadcast. <laughs> but today's game, or uh, this game, is going to be the Ducks and uh, the Sun Devils, and uh, the Ducks come in three and two. The Sun Devils one and uh, four, and there are four teams in this division. Now, uh, just in case they haven't caught the other uh, division, some of the rules here for Power Division 2 don't 100% match up with NBA rules or with even high school rules that some of our viewers may be accustomed to. One of the biggest ones is there is no stop of clock with out-of-bounds or foul shots until you reach two minutes left to go in the first half 
or two minutes left to go in the fourth period. And then it goes straight to high school rules, and obviously that's trying to get these kids ready for high school play. Yeah, essentially, Jackie. Yeah, we started doing that a long time ago just because it was a space issue. Uh, we used to play in the uh, middle school, and uh, we had to play all of our games there. So uh, when that was the case, you had to play eight, nine, ten games in a day. And, uh, of course, you were pressed for time, especially if the middle school had late afternoon practices and things like that. Since we built the recreation center, uh, things have opened up quite a bit. We do That's not necessarily a constraint on us as much as it used to be, but uh, we still like to do that just because they are a little younger and uh, they aren't conditioned like your regular, uh, you know, JV and freshman players. However, being a parent of a young one myself, I, I'm actually pleased when you hand them back to me and they're exhausted. I, you know that 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 helps. Um, one of the things uh, that Brian and I were talking about is the uh, possibility next season of expanding the season from uh, ten weeks to maybe twelve weeks. Because one of the things that I've seen is you get you know you finally get to game six or seven and you've got your momentum. You actually start to see some passing going on. The kids start playing together more as a team um, and, and then oh, and then the season's over and you have your and then you have your team party yeah you know what I'm, I'm with you a hundred percent on that uh, once again it was back to the space issue now that we have more gyms to play in it's not necessarily uh, like it used to be and that is something we can definitely entertain a long time ago we used to do tournaments as well because like you said you do a preseason seeding tournament and at the end you really get that gel the rhythm the flow and things like that and you really like to see the kids come together as a team like that and the coaches do too uh, once again, we run right into volleyball after this, so uh, we kind of lose uh, out on gym space there too. But uh, with the recreation center, things have opened up quite a bit. Now, volleyball, I, I know that at, at the time that our viewers are watching this, volleyball has already been signed up for. However, softball is something you can still sign up for, correct? Softball signups will be ongoing through uh, usually April 8th. Uh, Ryan tries to cut it off a little early just so we can get the preseason seating schedule in. We try to run a tournament the fourth week of uh, April just so we can do a preseason a preseason tournament for the adult men's league and that gives them an opportunity to see kind of where they're at if they need to go out and pick up uh, any uh, other ringers like your uh Counter, uh, your uh, friend there, uh, Mr. Calandra. He used to play in the league quite a bit. Oh yes, no, <laughs> a absolutely, absolutely. And uh, I, you, you can you can go to you could quite honestly go to Taylor Waste and pretty much pick up <laughs> any employee, and they're going to hit the ball out. I, I you know I think Chris actually hires on the basis. How far can you hit a softball? Okay, you're hired. <laughs> But, you know, he and I have had that discussion. Um, but softball is something that you can still uh, sign up for. And if you are uh, into running, walking, although you don't have to really, but the Brian Mickelson Memorial Run is coming up April 21st, and people can still register for that at Parks and Rec as well. That's correct. I don't want to give you guys the wrong dates. Uh, early registration does end. It's a discounted rate on the regular fee. I think it ends around March 6th to the 13th, and after that you'd pay your the regular rate. Great. And uh, I don't want to go ahead and spout those off because I don't want to give incorrect information. But, uh, yeah, sign-ups are ongoing. You can sign up up until Thursday before the event, and that is on, I believe, Saturday the 17th without having anything in front of me. And uh, great thing, a great run for everyone, community-based. Uh, it is an honorarium, the uh, two-mile run for uh, Mr. Mickelson. And uh, so if you can't run, you can't necessarily do a 10K, or, you know, you don't want to put yourself out there for a half marathon and uh, come in extra sore and uh, laid up on the couch for a few days, uh, just keep that two-mile mile in mind. Well, that certainly would be fun, and uh, it, it is a great event. I know the community has grown with this particular event. Every year it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and I expect to see uh, wonderful things for that run coming up. Well, Jason, we're going to take a little break, and then we're going to take a look at this game and uh, see how these teams are going to match up a little bit. We'll return to Mingus Union High School for our second game, which you can catch here on Verde Valley TV. It's the Sun Devils and the Ducks in well, I can't say Pac-12 action. <laughs> uh, minor Pac-12 action coming up after this. Service, convenience, price. Hi, I'm Tandy Taylor. Taylor Waste is locally owned and voted number one in residential garbage collection for the past seven years in a row. Ask about the convenience of curbside recycling for the Cottonwood and Verde Santa Fe areas. And right now, new customers will enjoy two months free service with your switch to Taylor Waste. Hi, I'm Chris Taylor at Taylor Waste. We're proud to serve our friends and neighbors with service tailored to your needs. The Cottonwood Recreation Center is proudly operated by the Cottonwood Parks and Recreation Department. 
The rec center offers a full fitness center, gymnasium, game room, climbing wall, and an indoor pool featuring a water slide and lazy river. The Recreation Center has child care services for members. There are party and community meeting rooms available for rent to the public. Visit the Cottonwood Recreation Center today or call 639-3200. We're in Mingus Union High School. The teams are out on the benches getting final instructions as uh, some of them, Jason, this will be their video debut uh, on Verde Valley TV. And, uh, you know, hopefully that uh, well, hopefully that bodes well but doesn't make any of them nervous. But, you know, we do this because we want to get them uh, accustomed to it. When they get to the Mingus level, the likelihood of them getting on TV and having to perform on television or radio is, is very high. So, you know, we want to get them used to it, right? You know, Jackie, if I could just interject there real quick, I just want to really uh, t- thank you guys for uh, doing this. I think it's a really good thing to have at the high school level, and it's also good for the parents, the grandparents, the people who can't get out and necessarily see the games in person. And uh, I don't know, do you guys uh, sell videos as well for the parents, uh, the grandparents who might live out of state? How does that work? Absolutely. You can email Ryan at MyRadioPlace.com, Ryan at MyRadioPlace.com, or just send him all your junk mail, whatever you prefer, <laughs> and he can talk to you uh, about video out there and we are getting ready for our jump here but uh, as is the case in youth basketball we have the official tying of the shoe tie out timeout right that, that seems to happen at uh, every division all right the ducks off to the left the sun devils in the maroon and yellow off to the right the ducks and the sun devils last time they matched up january 28th the ducks victorious 39 to 16 39 to 16 what do you think here mr lopez or connors who's going to win this tip jackie ah uh, well let's see and it, it appears as though well let's see oh i'll wait <laughs> And it looks like we're going to jump again as the ball goes out of bounds. And let's see, we have Lopez for the Sun Devils wins it, but tips it back, and possession goes to the Ducks to start with it. And coming around to the outside is Gill, and Gill's going to do the double dribble and or the travel and give up possession to the Sun Devils. That's one of the differences in this division. In this division, in the power division, that becomes a turnover. Possession. Locker gives it up inside the Sun Devils. Out to the corner. Shot up. Blocked. Nice block out there by Carson Anderson. The Ducks with the ball. Gill has it. He's got possession. Changes direction. Goes to the far side. Dribble into the key. Gives it up. Great block up underneath. Gets his own tip. It doesn't go the first time. Ducks get the rebound. Back to the outside and top to Gill. Across to the other side it goes. And well defended out there. Double teamed, which is another thing you can do in this division. Is double team and the travel is called on May. And possession goes back over to the Sun Devils. Connor sure had a good look there, Jackie. He certainly did. Far side corner. With the dribble inside up underneath. They're going to kick it back out to the outside. And he's in trouble. Three-point line brings it around. Three-point shot up off. No good. Rebound once again as Anderson corrals it. He's had several rebounds early in this one. Still 0-0, 6-15 left to go. Finds the open man, breaks the press, and off no good. Had the shot, but uh, couldn't get it to go was Lamb. With the ball. Coming up is uh, for the Sun Devils. That's going to be Kiteros. Kiteros uh, out to the outside. Back over to the middle. Just inside the three-point shot line. And up off the glass. No good. Out of bounds. Great hustle, though. Love to see that as uh, Powell Kiteros goes down. Or Kiteros, pardon me, goes down trying to get the ball uh, from going out of bounds. Gill with the dribble. It's going to get picked up right at the half-court mark. And he's going to break the press. Gets it passed off. Had an open man, but missed the window. And it is unable to be held. It goes out of bounds. Anderson couldn't hang out. Going down quickly is Lindsay. Lindsay gives the ball up. 
Goes out to Kiteros. Kiteros with the ball in the dribble. Far side it goes. And he's going to go toward the corner with it. Three-point shot up off. No good. And Anderson, who seems to be magnetic to the ball, gets another rebound. Yeah, I know his brother. I think he plays on the uh, freshman or JV high school team, doesn't he? You know he may. Carson's Jameson Anderson? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He gets his rebound again and then gets the first points of the game is Carson Anderson. And the Ducks lead this one 2 nothing. Lindsey gets the ball out. Trying to drive it inside his lamb. And he'll get caught up. The foul is called. And the Sun Devils will get possession. That inbound toward the scorer's table here at Mingus Union High School. Lindsay with the dribble going to the right side. Finds Kideros in the corner. Kideros puts it up and in. Three point shot. I didn't think he was going to take that shot. And the Sun Devils with the lead. Here comes Gill. He's double teamed. Trying to find somewhere to go. Gets the ball kicked off. Inside it goes and open is great Anderson. Play, great play. Good ball movement, and it's 4-3. to three. We got a ball game. Let's see if Kiro steps up on that right wing again. Lindsay kicks it out. Kiros right about where he was. They don't leave him alone this time. Lindsay up underneath, gets fouled going up. Or did he travel? And nope, they fouled him. He's going to go to the line, so Lindsay will have a chance to get his team tied up. He'll be shooting, too. Could get his give his team a lead they got a good they shoot from the full foul line here in power division two first one is up and off so Ty is the best he can do for his team at the moment as you'll notice most basketball players have a whole routine they go through here at the line got to bounce the ball seven times <laughs> Shot up and off and oh, not good, but a rebound, a phenomenal job. Rebounding the ball and putting it back up is Marky Lopez, and he'll get two points to put his team in the lead. Double teamed once again is Gill. Gill gives it up and Lindsay steals it, but not without the not without the foul. Yeah, go check in And it looks like we're gonna get some subs coming in for the Sun Devils. Wakefield will be coming in as well as Sandoval. Carnez and uh, number six, Hammer Jackson, Cody Hammer Jackson, and they uh, called the timeout. And so it looks like possession will stay with the Ducks. Well, here we are with 2.38 left to go in period number one. And we got a tight one for you. The Sun Devils are leading by a score of uh, five to four at the moment. Once again, the Ducks won their last meeting, thirty-nine to sixteen. I well, know Sun Devils will take possession, so apparently the steal was clean, Jason. And Kiteros, who has that three-point shot, is going to go to the far side, drive in a little bit. Get it out to the corner. Drive in toward the paint. Short. There's a battle for the rebound up underneath. A good fight and a jump ball called. And Kinez got into it down there and tied up Connors. But the arrow goes to the Ducks. Gill brings the ball down. They don't double team him this time. Out toward the top of the key around the horn. Trying to go back toward the middle. Out to the corner. He's got Gill to the outside, dribbles into the paint and loses it, it, and Kuderos picks it up. The loose ball, a gift. He's going to bring the dribble down. Off to the left side, it goes to Hammer Jackson, back to Kuderos. Kuderos stopped his dribble. He's going to pick it up, go toward the corner. And moving it back, it goes to Kuderos. They're not going to give him room at the three-point line anymore. Inside, Hammer Jackson shot up, partially tipped and blocked. And rebound off the Connors. Connors gets it, and well, they didn't call that one a jump ball, though. You got me on that. <laughs> Gill brings the dribble down. 
Looking for somewhere to go. Tries to get it in the middle. Two players move in different direction. The ball goes in between and out of the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we got Lindsey Mitchell, uh, Mitchell Lindsey uh, checking back in. He went to the foul line just before the timeout. Oh, tipped away and keeping it to himself and then stolen back. Coming the other way is Lamb. Keegan's got the dribble going straight to the paint. Finds himself surrounded. Loses the ball and then stolen loses again. the ball again. Somebody call a cop. There's been lots of stealing <laughs> going on here. Shot just goes a little short out of bounds and uh, the Sun Devils will come down with the lead. 35 seconds left to go and it is nice. stolen. Oh, by Gill. Gill has got a one-on-one. -on -one. The layup no good, but he'll be going to the foul line. 22 seconds left to go and Gill will go to the line to shoot two to tie it or put his team up. Now, Jason, if the time runs out... While we're at the foul line, he gets to finish his foul shots here in the first period, right? That is correct. Great replay. Shot up and in. And we got a tie score here, 5-5. Five to five. Now, everybody will leave the floor. Now, I've never found this to be an advantage. Oh, we got to go into our golf voices. I've never found this to be an advantage. Shot up. Second one good. Gill showing no mercy, not nervous at all. Well, we're going to take a quick break here as period end comes to a fold. The Ducks leading 6-5 to five over the Sun Devils. Hi, this is Travis Reed from Larry Green Chevrolet and Hyundai of Cottonwood. We're known as the people place, and whether it's our involvement in the community or our customers that visit our dealership, we make it a priority to keep that reputation. If you're in the market for a new or pre-owned car, truck, van, or SUV, you'll find that we have the largest selection of new and pre-owned vehicles around, and our sales team is professional and courteous. Visit Larry Green Chevrolet and Hyundai of Cottonwood, two dealerships, one convenient location, just off Highway 260 next to Walmart in Cottonwood. The Cottonwood Recreation Center is proudly operated by the Cottonwood Parks and Recreation Department. The rec center offers a full fitness center, gymnasium, game room, climbing wall, and an indoor pool featuring a water slide and lazy river. The recreation center has child care services for members. There are party and community meeting rooms available for rent to the public. Visit the Cottonwood Recreation Center today or call 639-3200. Back here at Mingus Union High School, the Sun Devils about to inbound right in front of our Verde Valley TV table. Lindsay with the ball and the dribble. He's going to go to the outside, almost stolen a give and go. Nice play, hook shot up, no good. And Anderson with the rebound. He's going to bring the ball up himself this time. Looking to go inside. Nope. Takes it to the outside. Splits the defense and then finds himself amongst the trees. Go up with it. Going to get three. And off. No good. Rebound coming down to Hammer Jackson. Gives it off to Lindsay. Goes to the near side this time. And inside again, but a travel called. And that'll be a turnover to the Ducks, who will have the ball and the lead 6-5. to five. Shooting percentage is not great here in the first period. Yeah, we got ASU shooting a little over uh, 30%, and the, the Ducks coming in at 25%. Oof. All right, Gill gets the ball inside, hands it off. Good move to the basket, goes Anderson. Can't get the finger roll to go. Doesn't quite get high enough, and the Sun Devils will get the ball. They had a good look there. Had a great look, great move to the basket. Hammer Jackson with the dribble. Looking to go to the inside and into the paint, and then throws it back to the outside. Overthrows his man, and it goes out of bounds. That was a good crossover there. Marky Lopez in for the Sun Devils. And the Ducks with the ball. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, somebody came out. There we go. Anderson with the dribble. Playing point guard now. The big man with the point guard duties. Driving to the basket and getting triple teamed is the Ducks. And uh, he'll give up the ball. And that was Connors finding themselves entrapped right there in the paint. 
Sun Devils did a pretty good job of converging on him as soon as he got into the paint. With the ball and the dribble is connect, or pardon me, no, that is uh, Lazaro. Out to the outside, good look, off, no good. Rebound comes back down to him, shot up, no good, partially blocked. Sun Devils get the ball again, two-handed shot up, no good, under the basket. The underarm uh, layup from underneath the basket, a great job as Hammer Jackson gets his first points of the game. Ducks with the ball. Gill Give trying to find Anderson. Great Look job. Oh. Oh. Same attempted shot, but no good for Anderson. Coming the other way is Lopez. Lopez gives it up to Kanaz. And driving to the outside and giving the ball up, but the foul is called. Should be a non shooting foul. Sun Devils will inbound. Almost under the basket. They go to the outside. Three-point shot up and good from downtown. A great job and a phenomenal three-point shot by the Sun Devils. Anderson coming the other way. Quickly on defense are the Sun Devils. Looks like Lopez put that up, Jackie. He did. He's got five points now. Double teamed in the corner is Connors. Trying to get up under the basket. Puts it up, but no good. And Lopez gets the rebound. And he was he looking for somebody to run. Gets the ball back into the corner it goes. Back out toward the top of the key. To the left-hand side. Got quiet in here for a moment. Shot up, no good. Rebound goes toward the line. Picked up by the Ducks. Anderson gets the ball. We got a full timeout. And with that timeout, we're going to take a quick 30-second break. We'll return to uh, Verde Valley TV's presentation of Cottonwood Parks and Rec Youth Basketball here at Mingus Junior Night School. We'll be at, back after this. That's the only thing. Service, convenience, price. Hi, I'm Tandy Taylor. Taylor Waste is locally owned and voted number one in residential garbage collection for the past seven years in a row. Ask about the convenience of curbside recycling for the Cottonwood and Verde Santa Fe areas. And right now, new customers will enjoy two months free service with your switch to Taylor Waste. Hi, I'm Chris Taylor at Taylor Waste. We're proud to serve our friends and neighbors with service tailored to your needs. Ten to six is our score. The Ducks leading the Sun Devils here with 4:16 left to go in period two. Now, this is different from some other basketball because uh, at the two-minute mark, we're going to go to high school rules where the clock is going to stop on out of bounds, foul shots, and every place that it would normally start with a or stop rather with a high school basketball game. That's correct. Anderson gives the ball up, did a great job driving, but lost it. Got a one on uh, three. Lindsay, and Lindsay oh. couldn't stop the momentum. Oh, had the breakaway, got the ball, but couldn't get the body to go up with the ball without the feet moving. And the Ducks will get the ball back, and we'll take a quick timeout. We're going to go ahead and keep it here, but I want to expand upon what I was talking about because through the rest of the game, except for the final two minutes of period two and the final two minutes of period four, Jason, that's the rest of that time it is a continuous clock, correct? That's right. And so that means that if the ball goes out of bounds or rolls out of the gymnasium, the <laughs> clock continues to roll. Now, it doesn't play as huge a role here, but when you get to the Mighty Might divisions with the youngsters and you actually have a foul shot, I have, I've seen almost two minutes of a ball game taken up with a foul shot, um, but the coaches are starting to catch on. They'll use their timeouts. Yeah, and another thing you want to watch is your substitution because you want to have your best players in there in the second and the fourth because they are going to play longer because the clock's not going to run. Just another thing if you're a coach, something well, to be cognizant of. Well, in the lower divisions, you automatically substitute at four minutes, but not the right. case here. You can substitute on any stop. And in trouble out there and fighting his way out of it is Jordan May. And he gets hacked for uh, his efforts, but well, they do maintain possession. Ball comes in to Bolanes, Bolanares. Lopez called for the foul. 
Inbound again, looking for somewhere to go. Somebody needs to get back court. There we go. Ball coming to the near side. And giving up. Gill has it. Gives it out to May. May puts the dribble down. Tries to drive. Throws up the shot. That was a great idea. Almost got it to go, didn't he? Yeah. That was a great idea, considering I wasn't sure where the uh, foul was called. Lindsay coming the other direction. Goes deep into the corner, trying to bring it back into the paint. Other side. There Gilles. he is. Oh! Just hits it short. Uh-oh. Free breakaway if they could get the ball out, but it was Tip trying to get the ball passed out, and a steal back the other way, and then the Sun Devils get it back, and then once upon a time there was... Well, uh, that's not how the story goes. <laughs> All right, inbounded Sun Devils with the ball. And uh, coming to the near side, back to the corner it goes. Driving baseline, gets the ball kicked back out, but throws it out to a duck who has the ball. Gil going the guy open. Way. And a long pass trying to get it to Lamb. And Lamb unable to keep it from going out of bounds. However, if he would have caught it, I think he would have gotten both feet in bounds. Oh, wait, that's football. <laughs> I was going to say that was about a 30-yard bomb there. <laughs> right. <laughs> Lindsay gets the ball the other way in the corner. A good drive by the Sun Devil. Shot up. No good. Partially blocked. Here come the Ducks. Ducks coming the other way. He's got possession. Could go coast to coast. And off. I think he's fouled in the process as Connors went up and uh, get got hacked. And he should have his two shots. The Ducks leading 10 to 6. The clock has stopped at 1.48 left to go in period two. This is the second of our two games. Won't tell you the score. First game was the uh, Jayhawks and the Wildcats. Connors first shot up off in that in, in uh, that conspicuous spot between the glass and the rim, and it bounces off again. The attempted rebound goes out of bounds. The Ducks are going to get it as it was deflected off of Kedros. And so the Sun Devils will have to defend again. This time it's stolen. And he stepped out of bounds. Lopez trying to on the line. He was, but Lopez did a great, great athletic job just getting to it. Ducks will inbound again. We'll practice this one again. Gets it into May. May up underneath. Throws it up. Great job to get it up. I'm not sure the basket the floor, really. I guess we were on the floor. We were on the floor. Okay. And wholesale substitutions here by the Sun Devils with a buck 43 left to go. Everybody's got to figure out where their man is. Quick inbound underneath. Nice. And a great job up. Fantastic. Blenares. Blenares gets the bucket and will go to the line. And yeah, somebody uh, lost their guarding duties right up underneath that basket. He'll have one to shoot. Shot is up. Great curve to it, but it's off. And the Sun Devils with the ball. Sun Devils got the uh, ball and the dribble. It's coming the other direction. Driving in is Lindsay. Lindsay puts up the shot. No good. Great rebound. Fade away Jackson. shot. No good. Connors with the Connors rebound with the for rebound. the Ducks. 117 left to go. 10 to 8. Sun Devils in the lead. May puts the shot up, can't get the rebound. Linares tries to get it as well, goes out of bounds on him. Quickly, inbound toward Lindsay, but stolen by Linares. Who's going to get it off to Connors? Connors, shot up. Oh, no oh, we good. Got travel. travel called. Shot was short. One minute left to go. 10 to 8, Sun Devils with the lead. That still reminded me of Reggie Miller when they were playing the Knicks, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> Inside. Hammer Jackson. Hammer Jackson was uh, hammering everything in his way to get the ball, get the shot up, and will go to the line for his, his play inside the paint. Had the momentum to the basket. 
And he'll have a chance to extend this two-point lead here for his Sun Devils. He'll be shooting two. 49.4 seconds left to go. What we saw in the other game was toward the end of the game, fouls actually started to play a role. And after seven fouls, there was a one and one. First shot goes off no good. So I assume that also means after ten team fouls, you'll go into the double bonus, that correct? That's correct. Now that's a whole different perspective to the game that some of these young men will have to figure out as they move along. Second shot, no good. May with the ball on a breakaway, finds his open man, can't get it to him. It's tipped out of bounds and should go to the Ducks. And no, it doesn't. Apparently went off the Sun Devils last. Lindsay gets the inbounded ball. He's going to bring it up. He's got 40 seconds left to go. He's going to move to the right. He's got Gill on him defensively. Looking for a pick, doesn't get one. Back to Lindsay. Lindsay's going to move to the left and gets his man up in the air. Now looking to pass. Passes in the oh. middle. Shot up. And he was harassed and does not get the shot to really go toward the basket. Connors brings it back the other way. Gill gets it. May. May's going to drive. Puts it down. Shot up. Off. No good. Get us. With the rebound. 10 seconds. And 10 Emma seconds. Jackson, coast to coast. Oh, Off, great look. No good. Second effort. No good. Third effort. Blocked. Fourth effort. No good. <laughs> Phenomenal job trying to get the uh, last two points. They had like six consistent shots at it, but couldn't get it to go. We'll return here as we're going to go into halftime at Mingus Union High School. The Sun Devils hanging precariously to a two-point lead, 10-8 to eight over the Ducks. We'll return to Mingus Union High School after this. The Cottonwood Recreation Center is proudly operated by the Cottonwood Parks and Recreation Department. The Rec Center offers a full fitness center, gymnasium, game room, climbing wall, and an indoor pool featuring a water slide and lazy river. The Recreation Center has child care services for members. There are party and community meeting rooms available for rent to the public. Visit the Cottonwood Recreation Center today or call 639-3200. Hi, this is Travis Reed from Larry Green Chevrolet and Hyundai of Cottonwood. We're known as the People Place, and whether it's our involvement in the community or our customers that visit our dealership, we make it a priority to keep that reputation. If you're in the market for a new or pre-owned car, truck, van, or SUV, you'll find that we have the largest selection of new and pre-owned vehicles around, and our sales team is professional and courteous. Visit Larry Green Chevrolet and Hyundai of Cottonwood, two dealerships, one convenient location, just off Highway 260 next to Walmart in Cottonwood. Service, convenience, price. Hi, I'm Tandy Taylor. Taylor Waste is locally owned and voted number one in residential garbage collection for the past seven years in a row. Ask about the convenience of curbside recycling for the Cottonwood and Verde Santa Fe areas. And right now, new customers will enjoy two months free service with your switch to Taylor Waste. Hi, I'm Chris Taylor at Taylor Waste. We're proud to serve our friends and neighbors with service tailored to your needs. Back here at Mingus Union High School, getting ready for halftime of our game between the Sun Devils and the Ducks. So this would be the mini Pac-12 series, right? That's right. It wasn't for lack of shooting, that's for sure. No, no, <laughs> definitely not. Um, however, uh, I believe that in this league you use a, um, uh, a a positively charged basketball and a positively charged uh, rim, so a lot of times they push each other away. Is that what happens? That might be an explanation for what we're seeing here. It could be. Our shooting <laughs> percentages um, a, a tad bit on the low side, uh, but I'll tell you, they've had plenty of looks and plenty of hustle, and I think that's what this is really all about. That's correct. Uh, ASU, uh, the Sun Devils have put up 22 shots so far, Jackie, and they're shooting a little under 20%, and uh, the Ducks have put up 17 shots, and uh, they're shooting a little uh, under 20% as well, so uh, like I said, it's not for lack of shooting, that's for sure. Nope, there's been uh, breakaways and uh, long pass attempts. It's it's exciting, I'll tell you what, If uh, and, and unfortunately, uh, this season is coming to a close, but next season, this is something that you can get the kids involved in. We're talking boys and girls from ages 7 to 14. You're looking at like $35, approximately $35 to get your kid involved in basketball, right? That's correct. And you know what really starts at the, at the 
varsity level. I know that they got a, a new coach in here, and as, uh, it would be, uh, I think, in everyone's best interest if uh, maybe we all started working together when the kids are, you know, even younger than seven, per se. Something I think that, you know, needs some, some we need to look at it anyway. Right, because three-year-old basketball would be exciting. <laughs> it would be. <laughs> we can lower those goals a little bit. What do you mean lower the goals? <laughs> yeah, you know, they got to they gotta shoot to the 10-foot rim at some point, right? Or we could play with tennis balls, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had... Uh, um, I had uh, Coach Owens on and got a little bit of an idea that he was looking for possibly some youth travel teams for basketball, creating feeder programs to keep some of these kids playing basketball longer than, than just a 10-week period of time or just the middle school season to, to be able to do some off-season basketball, which, you know, that's that's how programs grow. That's exactly right. And uh since I'm not from here, I didn't quite understand when I moved here, but it seems like the basketball season is the most condensed. They play baseball, I mean, pretty much, you know, nine months out of the year, and I mean, you got that good core group of kids who play football, and they'll play, and then, uh, you know, you got Coach Young and uh, the varsity guys, they get them in there at a young age, they run a lot of camps and programs, and they keep them involved in the program. Absolutely, and, yeah, and football is uh, quite an involved, uh, you know, program, and, and it, it takes more and more weeks to prep for your first game, because uh, you're dealing with with a, a much bigger team, many different kids. You know, obviously with a basketball squad, you can you can have seven or eight kids and, and go out and play. But we'd love to see some of these uh, uh, teams expand. We already have 20 teams with Cottonwood Parks and Rec so far between the boys and girls. Um, however, with the girls' Division One program, uh, at, at the Mighty Might Division, it's co-ed, but at the Division One program, there's only three teams. Yeah, and that's something I I, I, I can't put a theory behind, but it's kind of uh, just going uh, on attrition like you talked about. I mean, you have eight teams in the uh, Mighty Might Division, then you move up to PD1, you only have five, and then you move up to the PD2, and now you're down to four teams. And like I said, I don't know if the it's the other programs and people who uh, take a particular interest in the kids who show uh, that they have a certain skill set and they uh, you know push them into the baseball in the football more so, but uh, you do see that a lot, and I don't quite understand why. Well, we're going to take a little break here from English Union High School, and I uh, would like to uh, thank some of our sponsors, including Taylor Waste and Cottonwood Parks and Rec, for sponsoring this special of Cottonwood Parks and Rec Youth Basketball Power Division 2. That's boys ages 12 through 14 here on Verde Valley TV. We'll be back after this. Hi, this is Travis Reed from Larry Green Chevrolet and Hyundai of Cottonwood. We're known as the People Place, and whether it's our involvement in the community or our customers that visit our dealership, we make it a priority to keep that reputation. If you're in the market for a new or pre-owned car, truck, van, or SUV, you'll find that we have the largest selection of new and pre-owned vehicles around, and our sales team is professional and courteous. Visit Larry Green Chevrolet and Hyundai of Cottonwood, two dealerships, one convenient location, just off Highway 260 next to Walmart in Cottonwood. Service, convenience, price. Hi, I'm Tandy Taylor. Taylor Waste is locally owned and voted number one in residential garbage collection for the past seven years in a row. Ask about the convenience of curbside recycling for the Cottonwood and Verde Santa Fe areas. And right now, new customers will enjoy two months free service with your switch to Taylor Waste. Hi, I'm Chris Taylor at Taylor Waste. We're proud to serve our friends and neighbors with service tailored to your needs. The Cottonwood Recreation Center is proudly operated by the Cottonwood Parks and Recreation Department. The Rec Center offers a full fitness center, gymnasium, game room, climbing wall, and an indoor pool featuring a water slide and lazy river. The Recreation Center has child care services for members. There are party and community meeting rooms available for rent to the public. Visit the Cottonwood Recreation Center today or call 639-3200. Back here at Mingus Union High School, it is the Ducks and the Sun Devils, a 10-8 to score here at halftime, and uh, the Sun Devils, well, let's see, they were led by number four, Marky Lopez, he had five points in the first half, as Kiros had uh, three points, Hammer Jackson had two, 
for the Ducks. The leading scorer was uh, Carson Anderson, who started on fire underneath, rebounding the ball. And then uh, I don't know if there was a change in the defense, but he uh, didn't get the ball up underneath the basket for most of the second period. He still leads the Ducks with four points, two points to Blenares, and uh, two points to Gill, both of his coming from the free throw line here 10-8 to eight at halftime at Mingus Union High School. Well, along with us is Jason Little from uh, Cottonwood Parks and Rec. And, uh, you know, I do appreciate you guys putting together uh, all of these different programs for the kids, but you've got a phenomenal facility, and I, got, I, I can't even count the number of kids that probably use your facility just for the pool and the slide. Yeah, it's really something else. I mean, on a daily average, we average a couple of hundred kids who come in day in, day out, and uh, they really enjoy the uh, pool facilities, the game room, and the uh, gymnasium. Like you said, I mean, every day after 3.30, you have a lot of kids coming over from CMS, uh, a lot of pickup basketball. And as a matter of fact, you see a lot of these kids behind us uh, in there, and it's great to see. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, you get them coming back to the same place, and, you know, it's a, it's a good place. It's a safe place. you got the library right around the corner from you, so you can go work on the body. You can go work on the mind, right? Exactly. Absolutely. You still do the uh, 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 the wall climbing, the rock wall climbing? Still have the rock wall climbing. It opens every day at 4 o'clock, so a lot of people take advantage of that, too. It's uh, really a nice amenity to have in the building, and, uh, yeah, it's great to be here in Cottonwood. Oh, it is a phenomenal facility. If you've not been down to the Parks and Rec building, please do so. Don't forget, you can still do registration for the Brian Mickelson Memorial Run coming up April 21st, and that's if Ryan told me the right date. That but would I, be right. I, yeah. I do believe that that is the right date, so you want to go ahead and get in with that. Well, we're going to go ahead and turn things back around for half number two, which is just about to start here, where the Sun Devils are leading the Ducks by a score of 10-8, to eight, looking for second half action coming right around the corner here. Now, any insight here, Jason, on uh, what either one of these teams can do? Did you see any particular uh, uh, advantages offensively or uh, any defenses that they might be able to employ. Well, you know what? Uh, Lopez, he really impressed me. He's getting to the basket. He has a nice crossover that he can utilize, and he has a couple of times, and it seems to catch the uh, Ducks off guard. And then, like you said, Carson Anderson, he really has a presence in the paint. Uh, he's putting the ball up a lot. He's just not, like you said, I think it's that positive energy, a positive charge on the ball in the uh, goal there. But uh, he's getting a lot of uh, good looks. It looks like Gill's bringing the ball up quite a bit. you got Kiro's uh, still uh, launching those threes, so uh, it should be an exciting second half. Blacker's uh, right in front of us to inbound, and we are ready for second half action. Gill gets the ball, and uh, we appreciate the uh, referees working with us for our TV timeouts. Tipped away, and there goes Lopez. Pass. Lopez with the open layup, and fouled. Doesn't get it to go in, but he's fouled on the process. Gill picks up, I think, his second. I'd have to check with the scorer's table, but that is going to put uh, Marky... Lopez to the line and a chance to extend the lead here for the Sun Devils. Now they shoot from the regular free throw line at this division. The minors division, do they do that as well or do they move up? Uh, they move into about 10 feet. Uh, of course, you know, they just don't have the uh, the strength yet to quite get it there and uh, we found that's more advantageous and it helps, helps them with their form. One for two is Lopez and it becomes a three point uh, lead out there which could Play a role later on in the game, 11 to 8. And here come the Ducks going from uh, right to left across your television dial. Inside, it goes back into Anderson. Anderson finds the hoop, but no good. Called off. And apparently called for a travel. Lindsay with the ball coming the other way, trying to split the defense. Nope, that was a fake. Back to the outside it goes. Key Rose with the ball. He was dangerous from three-point line, and he puts it up, gets his own rebound. Does he? Can he hang on to it? A scramble for the ball, and he tries to get it up, and uh, kind of gets pushed from behind. Uh, kind of a forced fumble or forced walk, but the Sun Devils are going to get the ball. Ah, oh, that football's coming out in me. Sun Devils, I believe, are going to take a timeout. Yep, the Sun Devils are going to take a quick timeout and talk about it here. 6 11 left to go. Shouldn't the timeout stop the clock? I would imagine. There we go. We stopped it at 6 11. A little delay there. Yeah, they got it. All right. That was a delayed timeout. <laughs> oh, I love it. 
Well, the Sun Devils here came out uh, came out very aggressive with a steal and got a uh, a extra foul shot for their reward, and now have possession of the ball in their own side of the court. Ducks come out. They bring. Wow, the Ducks came out with their their big man set, and ball doesn't quite get in from out of bounds. They're going to try it again. He's trying to get that into Lopez there. And they're trying to get under the basket, which I can understand it goes to Kiros. Kiros is going to drive to the left, finds a, an open Lindsay, and he'll pass it back out. Kiros drives back to the outside, open shot, but short, and out of bounds. Leave on the Ducks, and that's going to give the Sun Devils another inbound attempt. Nestor had a good look there. Oh, yeah. Trying to get it back up underneath. Driving to the paint off the glass. No good. Gets his rebound. Or at least slaps at it, but it's going to be duck ball. Quick oh, look at that. Kiros. He caught everybody off guard, including his own team. Ooh, and the wow. layup is up and good. His own team had gone way down court. And he had to turn around and actually yell for them to come back. Gill gets it tipped. Anderson with the ball finds the open man. A quick open Great. shot. Great that pass. was pretty. Shot. That was Matthew Blocker gets the shot. His first points of the game coming here in period three, and it's 13-10 back to a three-point lead. To the other side it goes. Sun Devils with the ball. Kiros playing point guard now. Gets it into the corner. Lindsay up, no good. May with the rebound. Great block out. Didn't even have to go up for that one. Gill coming down the right side, trying to get his team in the right spot. Oh. And he's, he, well, okay, no call there. Anderson with the ball, gets it up inside. Baseline, little push off. That happens all the time in the NBA. And it's going to be a turnover. Sun Devils with the ball. Lindsay with the dribble coming across the timeline. Looks right. Looks left, goes left. Into the corner it follows. Back out to the top to Lindsay. Lindsay looking to drive. He's got Gill on him defensively. Up to the top of the key. Inside to Kiros. Kiros to the corner. A drive back out to the top. And a steal by Gill. Gill could go coast to coast all the way. Gets fouled and gets the bucket. I think Kiros got a little bit of a hand in from behind. And Alexis Gill will get his first two points of the second half and a chance to tie this one with 3.35 left to go in period three. You know the Sun Devils came out on a 5-0 run there and the Ducks have came back. Shot up, off, no good. Came back to him, everybody looked at him and Gill had a second shot, couldn't get it to fall. Here come the Sun Devils into the corner to Kiros. Kiros, quick shot up, off, no good. And he had the open look. And uh, we got a timeout called here, and we're going to take. Uh, tell you what, we're going to now. You know what? We're going to go ahead and stay with you here, and see where we're going with this one. Thirteen to twelve, the Sun Devils go through wholesale changes once again, and they do make quite a few changes uh, during the course of this game. I've seen. Not just one or two, but Coach Rutledge will replace almost his entire squad on the floor uh, when he goes into a timeout or something along these lines. And that's really good to see. That means the kids are attending practices and, uh, you know, they're all uh, paying attention and uh, they're learning. Well, it makes, you know, the practices are, are huge. Absolutely huge. And it makes uh, so much sense to me when Great. you can get these kids out and you can practice for, you know, two, two and a half even, you know, upwards of three hours. I know that's a lot for some of the younger kids, but, you know, three hours a week in practice can make a huge difference on how the team can gel, especially in a 10-week period of time. It really does, and it's up to a lot to the parents, too. You want them to work with their kids outside of practice. That only helps the child and, you know, the team as well. Anderson goes to the outside and uh, kind of picks up a little bit of an elbow. It's, takes the ball, gets it back just inside. Three-point line, shot up, no good. Gill with the rebound. Comes to the near side, shot up, off, no good. 
And getting hit was uh, Blenares. Blenares is going to go to the line. He'll shoot two. He pretty much took a chop lock. <laughs> <laughs> But he'll get to the, go to the line for it. Who says basketball isn't a contact sport? All right. Blenares, his first shot is up and off. No good. The Doc still one more shot and one more attempt to tie this one up at 13. Second shot is up and finds the hole. And it is good. We got a new ball game. 13, 13, third period. Two minutes left to go. Kyros with the ball and the dribble, trying to set himself up, and the ball is tipped away. Here comes Gill. He has got a two-on-one. He's going to take it to the hole, but loses control of the ball. And it might have been tipped away and goes out of bounds. Ducks will get the inbound under the basket. Sub coming in. Lindsay coming back out for the Sun Devils. Kudros will get a break. And inbound play here by the Ducks. Oh, look at that look. Blenares finds himself in the middle of the zone, just set himself there, and gets the basket, and the Ducks have the lead. Lindsay over to Jackson. Shot up off. Anderson with another big rebound. He's going to take control of the ball. Nice look. Up Go underneath. Up that. Connors couldn't get it back up. Had the ball, had possession, couldn't get the flow to go back toward the the basket, but he'll be able to inbound. Watch under! Watch under! Cody going under! Outside, Blenares gets it, finds a man, and then gives it away. Sun Devils pick it off and get the steal. Coming the other way, 36 seconds left to go. And the Ducks lead by a score of 15 to 13. Inside, nice move to the hole. Anderson gets the rebound going the other way by the Ducks. Looking for his man. No, he's going to go to the hole. Strong off. No good. Fight for the rebound is tied up. And we're going to get a jump ball. That might that might eat up most of the uh, end of the third period. Sun Devils need to inbound quick. Lindsay better get the ball down quick. It is under three seconds. Coming up a long three. Off, no good. 15 to 13, our score here at the end of the third period. Ducks with a two point lead. We'll return to Mingus Union High School after this. Service, convenience, price. Hi, I'm Tandy Taylor. Taylor Waste is locally owned and voted number one in residential garbage collection for the past seven years in a row. Ask about the convenience of curbside recycling for the Cottonwood and Verde Santa Fe areas. And right now, new customers will enjoy two months free service with your switch to Taylor Waste. Hi, I'm Chris Taylor at Taylor Waste. We're proud to serve our friends and neighbors with service tailored to your needs. The Cottonwood Recreation Center is proudly operated by the Cottonwood Parks and Recreation Department. The rec center offers a full fitness center, gymnasium, game room, climbing wall, and an indoor pool featuring a water slide and lazy river. The Recreation Center has child care services for members. There are party and community meeting rooms available for rent to the public. Visit the Cottonwood Recreation Center today or call 639-3200. We're going to start period number four. The Sun Devils in possession of the ball. Two points down. Uh, they led at the end of, uh, well, at halftime. They were up by two points. And the Ducks have come back. A long shot off. And uh, no good out there by Wakefield. Ball coming the other way. Long pass. Connors gets it, but he's in traffic. Layaway shot, fallaway shot. No good. And Lindsay with the rebound for the Sun Devils coming the other direction. Looking to drive, gets double teamed right at the three-point line. Finds his man, good touch, but no good, can't get it to fall, is Hammer Jackson. He'll go to the line, though. You know, the Sun Devils are really running right now. They got small in. Looks like they're running a four-guard four guard unit right now. 
sometimes in the smaller divisions, it's doesn't matter who you put in. It looks like you got four cards <laughs> in. <laughs> Hammer Jackson shot up. No good. Off. And he'll have a chance to bring his team within one. Now watch for the rebound here. See who blocks out quickly. Bounces it. Looks at the basket. Second shot up. No good. Huh. Um, he's getting three shots? I missed that one. Was okay. it a three? Did he put up a three? Um, I didn't think so. Third shot, no good. May gets the rebound. And here comes Anderson with the dribble. Right to left. Going right down the gut. Looking for somewhere to go. Gets double team. Finds Gill to the far side. Outside it goes back inside to May. May's got a shot up and off. No good. Rebound. Fought for underneath the basket. And pulled in by Bolaneras. And it is stolen away. Wakefield oh, gets it, but oh, couldn't keep his feet. What are we talking about? It is hard to run and dribble. It is. You know, and if uh, if you haven't played basketball, but uh, you're a, a, a great armchair coach, I dare you to come out and try to run full speed. Three-point shot up. No good. Anderson had a shot. May will follow it up, and Jordan May gets his points. First points of the game and extends the lead 17-13. to 13. Sun Devils, who once again led at halftime, giving it up a little bit inside. Hammer Jackson can't get the roll. Anderson gets the rebound going the other way. Quickly, down the right side, he's going to drive it in. Dish it back out to the other side, and it is broken up by Wakefield. Wakefield, great job defensively getting up there. Hammer Jackson going the other way, loses the handle. Gill gets it. Back to Anderson. Here come the Ducks. Right side, right hand dri dribble. Intensity's picked up a little bit, Jack. Oh, it has. I like fast basketball. Into the corner it goes, Gill. Back to Anderson. Anderson looking deep, far side, can't save it. And looking uh, for, it looked, looked like he was trying to get the ball to Lamb in the corner and couldn't get it done. A little bit too far, a little bit too long. A good idea. He was wide open over there in the corner. Wholesale changes once again here by the Sun Devils. And the Ducks restack their unit out there on the field. Blacker comes in. Or, I'm sorry, it's Blatcher comes in. Matt Blatcher. And here come the Sun Devils. Back it goes to Kiros. Kiros trying the right side. Gets into the paint. Nice Great shot. finger roll. His first point to the second half, he's got five on the game, and it's 17-15. Almost an extra step, but no. Blanares takes it for him. <laughs> and that'll be a timeout here for the Docks. We'll leave it here. And that's, that's one of the major rules here that changes, but it really doesn't change at this level. It changes at the level below this in Division One. Because when you're in the Mighty Mike division, uh, double dribbles and travels are either either they let it go or they stop and tell the child what they did wrong and that same team maintains possession, gets to inbound it. However, at Division One, which uh, now becomes what, the 10-11? Uh, uh, 10 11, 10 and 11 so okay. that's correct. In that division, all of a sudden travel becomes a turnover, correct? That is correct. Right. Now that that becomes a, a rather significant difference for a lot of these kids. It does. So uh, at the same time, the foul shots and counting fouls and keeping fouls along those lines, um, that complicates the game for uh, the these young ladies and young men as well. But... I, you know, I think that's the perfect time to teach him. Yeah, I think it is too, Jackie. And I mean, you got to learn it sometimes, and the earlier the better. I, I think definitely the earlier, most better. Yeah, exactly. That I was mean, really poor English. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, my part too. So we're we're both the same there. <laughs> Inbounding the ball is the Ducks. They're going to get it in quickly. Nice oh, pass. nice pass attempt. Lindsay, though, with the steal. And here it comes the other way. Lopez has the ball. Gives it up to Key Rose for three. Off. No good. Anderson 
magnetically finds himself with the ball again. I really like this lineup the Sun Devils have out there right now. He drives all the way under, kicks it back out. May up and in. Nice Was he out at the three-point mark or no? I think he was just in, wasn't he? Just inside, but not by much. Ooh, almost a steal. But maintaining the ball is Nestor, Travis Nestor. All right, Kiros puts it up. We <laughs> knock each other over trying to get the ball. And Hammer, or Hammer Jackson gets the shot up, doesn't get it to fall. A breakaway going the other way by the Ducks. An attempt up there by Blatcher. And here come the Sun Devils. It's running good. And do we have the charge? We charge? Yep, we have the charge. May held his ground and got his position. They're going to want the film on that one to show what it looks like to get your feet stopped first. That's just about the hardest thing to teach anyone. Jackie's how to take a charge. No kidding. You got somebody running full full speed at me and I'm <laughs> supposed to stand still? Are exactly. you serious? Yeah. Well, they're going to take uh, a quick break, a timeout here. Or are they going to just substitute? Looks like they're just going to substitute. And it's all a matter of um, being quick enough to get yourself into the right position at the right time. That's right. No one win the fall. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it does It does make a difference when you don't take the full charge. You actually start leaning backward a little bit so that you don't take full impact, you know? Absolutely. And when some of those strong forwards are coming down, I wouldn't want to be the brunt of that. Quick nice pass, pass inside, up underneath the basket. He won't get the shot off. However, Blineras may go to the line again. He does. Let's see, Blineras so far on the game has gotten one free throw. That was an important one, though. Tied you know, the game. Anderson's doing a really good job of distributing the ball today. And that's what we like to see, those kids who play uh, middle school ball and come down and play in this league as well. We like to see them get out and distribute the ball like that. First shot up, no good. Long rebound to the man in the fans. And he'll get a second shot at it. Two minutes left to go. So the clock will go to normal high school rules at this point. Second shot up, no good. Great arc, bad rim. Kiros gets the long pass coming the other way. Gets it into Lindsay. Up Whoa. And oh, and he is just wiped out. Goes down hard. Anderson, I think, lost his footing going that direction, and Lindsay took a shot. And they're going to give him a, a moment to uh, compose himself, and he's showing he's tough. Like I said, this is a contact sport. Don't let them tell you anything different. The only difference uh, is, is, well, you're not supposed to make the contact, and more importantly, you don't have the pads. It's not as quite as rough as hockey, though. Kiros for three. No good. Anderson finds himself positioned right again, brings the ball down quickly the other way, gets himself double teamed. Out to Whoa. Hill. A deep three-pointer that falls short and uh, lost the ball. Oh, Kiros ran into his own man and uh, did lose the ball. It's going to be a turnover. And the Ducks are going to slow it down and bring back in Connors. Josh Connors is going to go back out there. That's exactly what I was going to say, Jackie. It'll be interesting to see if they go, slow go. it down, but bad inbounds pass there. And Kiros Tried to get the ball over to uh, Lopez. It ended up uh, hitting Anderson and going out, so at least they maintained possession. But the Sun Devils down by four, trying to fight their way back. The last time these two teams met, the Ducks won it big, 39-15. to 15. Long rebound, comes out to Kiros, up for three. No good. And out of bounds. Don't want to decide on that one, who that one was out on. Looks like we're going to stay red. Isn't that maroon? Maroon. There we ah, go. There we yeah. go. All right. Quickly it comes in. Lopez. Oh, oh shot. Right up. on the elbow. And May and Lopez combine. Lopez is still down. And yeah, he did come down hard on that elbow, but he's going to get back up quickly. 
He'll come out. He'll need to sit down here for a moment. Ducks will get the ball. Coming in for him is Lazaro, Christian Lazaro. Here comes Anderson. Oh, he's going to pick up tough duties, too. Anderson drives, gets it out to May. May looking to drive. Hook shot up. Nice. Left-handed. Jordan May with six points in the second half. Under a minute left to go. The Sun Devils need to uh, figure out how to get back into this one quickly. They're down by six. Lopez coming in again. He's got that game face on, and there's gonna, they're going to take a little break here. Now, down by six. Jason, what do you do with this? I mean, you got possession of the ball, but do you have to start fouling quickly? I think I'd probably start fouling quickly, and I'd really put a lot of pressure up front as they're bringing the ball up. Well, at this, uh, at this division, puts a lot of pressure on these kids to have to try to shoot threes to get back into the game. It sure does. I mean, it's certainly possible, but your three-point uh, shooting percentage at a 12- to 14-year-old age probably is not going to be uh, um, super high. So having, uh, with that as a thought, as a coach, would you think maybe of faking the threes and trying to catch up by twos and hoping that uh, they can't hit the foul shots on the other end of the line? I think I'd probably use, uh, well, it look like, looks like he's staying out, but I'd probably try to get some penetration down the middle and draw the foul. I saw a lot of that today, and I think that if you could get the ball down in the middle, you, there's a good chance that you could hopefully get them to commit a foul and maybe, you know, uh, bring the game closer at the line. Well, possibly so. The clock is not your friend if you're a Sun Devil fan. Good ball movement inside, just inside the three-point line. Off, no good. Anderson has got like 20 rebounds here today. He's going to bring it up. Nobody fouls him. Blenares gets the ball back to Anderson. Time is running out. 37 seconds. Duck still with the ball. Nice pass inside. Connors gets the bucket. That one hurts. That sure did, Jackie. Sun Devils, 26 seconds left to go. Kiros puts the shot up off the glass, gets it again, and he'll get fouled. 18.2 seconds left to go. He'll go to the line, but an eight-point deficit could be too much uh, to overcome at this point in the game. Dribble is down. Kiros shot is up. Off. Kiros has had a uh, tough shooting day here today. Second shot is up and off again. Rebound. Goes off the Ducks and uh, will maintain red. Mr. Travis went for it. Didn't get the ball. The Ducks got it out of bounds. Looking to inbound. He's got a hurry. Ball up underneath and... Uh, Lost out of bounds. It becomes duck ball. Full court press should be on. And only 10 seconds left. Anderson, unless he's fouled, he could probably kill out this game. Three-point shot up by May. Off. No good. Rebound, Connors. And as time runs out, there's a jump ball. And it looks like that's going to be the end be of the game. game. 23 to 15, 23 to 15, your final score. The Ducks move to four and two. The Sun Devils, one and five on the season. Once again, 23 to 15, we're going to take a break and uh, we'll return with some stats from the game and uh, see who was the leading scorer in this one. We'll be back to Bingus Union High School after this. The Cottonwood Recreation Center is proudly operated by the Cottonwood Parks and Recreation Department. The rec center offers a full fitness center, gymnasium, game room, climbing wall, and an indoor pool featuring a water slide and lazy river. The recreation center has child care services for members. There are party and community meeting rooms available for rent to the public. Visit the Cottonwood Recreation Center today or call 639-3200. Service, convenience, price. Hi, I'm Tandy Taylor. Taylor Waste is locally owned and voted number one in residential garbage collection for the past seven years in a row. 
Ask about the convenience of curbside recycling for the Cottonwood and Verde Santa Fe areas. And right now, new customers will enjoy two months free service with your switch to Taylor Waste. Hi, I'm Chris Taylor at Taylor Waste. We're proud to serve our friends and neighbors with service tailored to your needs. Hi, this is Travis Reed from Larry Green Chevrolet and Hyundai of Cottonwood. We're known as the people police, and whether it's our involvement in the community or our customers that visit our dealership, we make it a priority to keep that reputation. If you're in the market for a new or pre-owned car, truck, van, or SUV, you'll find that we have the largest selection of new and pre-owned vehicles around. And our sales team is professional and courteous. Visit Larry Green Chevrolet and Hyundai of Cottonwood. Two dealerships, one convenient location, just off Highway 260 next to Walmart in Cottonwood. Final here today as the Sun Devils fall to the Ducks, 23 to 15. And Ryan Bigelow, being a big Oregon fan, well, you know, I mean, he, he, I'm sure he's got to be happy when the Ducks win, right? Well, he always is, and I don't know if uh, he's told you or not, but uh, they're ranked 54th coming into the uh, baseball season too. So he uh, he follows them in every sport. So it's uh, <laughs> he always makes sure we know that. That's for sure. Oh well, yeah, yeah, I, I understand that. Uh, um, I, I work a lot with a Yankees fan. I hear about everything Yankees. But I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, they, <laughs> I guess they traded off one of their pitchers today to the Pirates. Well. You know, that, that's extremely possible, but yeah. uh, and I'm sure Zach knows all about it. <laughs> he, he will tell me all about it. Here tonight, um, or or this afternoon, I, first of all, I want to thank Mingus Union High School, who has uh, given us use, to the, use of the gym, which I think is a thrill for these kids to be able to, I mean, these are middle school kids, and they get to come and play on the Mingus uh, Gymnasium and get a little feel for it and then get in front of the camera and you know as these kids grow up we're going to ask them to start to get used to this if they're going to be in sports here in northern arizona the likelihood of landing up on radio or or on television at some point is very high yeah you know uh, we can't thank them enough and i'm uh, sure uh, coach owens uh, wishes they were playing today i know that they had a division tournaments last night and this morning i do know uh, the camp Verde girls are still in it they're playing safford today at three o'clock up in flagstaff and like i said we can't thank them enough i'm I'm sure they'd rather be practicing right now and still be in tournament action, but uh, I guess it worked out for us. Well, certainly so, but uh, speaking of the coaching staff, um, I, I've seen uh, both the Coach Owens from Mingus Union High School uh, hanging around Parks and Rec and working with you. We saw Coach Mark Owens, the uh, varsity coach, out here today sitting down and watching both games. And I, I think that's fantastic. Um, uh, possibility of uh, recruiting, looking at the future talent, would you say? I would say so. And you know what? Some of these kids, I was pleasantly surprised. I mean, there is a foundation to build upon here. And, you know, it's good that he's out watching them. Hopefully he can get them in the gym, uh, have some uh, open gyms, and uh, get them playing with the uh, JV and, uh, you know, the uh, underclassmen. So uh, they, they, they get that more, the, more, the more exposure and the more touches that they need. Well, you don't get any better by playing somebody worse than you. That's right. And, uh, you know, and I, I, I tell my son all the time, you, you know, you get better by playing the bigger boys. You really do. Absolutely. You know, they're going to challenge you. They, you know, when you're playing somebody and they make you look slow because they're just that much faster or they make you, you know, they're just that much bigger or whatever the case is, that's how you get better and that's how you get better quicker. And uh, one of the things that I uh, really enjoyed in a previous interview that I had with uh, Coach Mark Owens was the possible mention of youth travel teams for basketball in this area to, to start boistering the uh, basketball program and maybe become uh, some feeder programs into the high school system. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good thing. And we did have a, a coach uh, about four years back, and he started a traveling team. As a matter of fact, uh, four of those kids are playing on the varsity team right now. Uh, what's very interesting about this program, Jackie, is uh, 11 of the 15 boys on the varsity team uh, did come through this. It's, so it was a feeder program and uh, 11 of the 13 girls. That's that, see that's that's absolutely fantastic. And I'm going to kind of go back and uh, um, and ask, and I know, you know, and I know you have your your schedules and and things, and there are so many things going on that Parks and Rec has to be a part of, and and chooses to be a part of, and one season. St- 
tends to overlap into another. But if there is a way to take a 10-week basketball season and make it a 12-week basketball season, even if the other two weeks is just practice, I think that goes an awful long ways because I've seen all these kids start to come together at the end of the season. And it's, oh, you know, you come together for a final fantastic game and then you have your, your party. Yeah, Jackie, the, uh, the program's about inclusion, and uh, I totally agree with you wholeheartedly. Something I would like to see, and uh, it, we did discuss it about four years back, is having that eight- to nine-week season and then having the coaches pick a traveling team, whereby the city and Parks and Recreation Department would co-sponsor the team, and that team would go represent Cottonwood and play in a couple of traveling leagues, just, you know, three or four games, a couple of additional weeks that they get, you know, that they get those touches. But, I mean, this program down here, it's for everyone, but I think that it does have its place, and it's something that definitely needs to be investigated here within, you know, the city. Right, and and if something like that doesn't work, maybe the reintroduction of uh, uh, of a, a playoff bracket. Absolutely, and we used to do that too. That was a highly popular. Uh, people really get into that. That's for sure. Well, yes, but we but we all have to still remember these are still kids. You know, th- this isn't college, uh, collegiate, or professional sports. So um, while we definitely want to get into the playoffs, um, we we have to make sure that our passion is tempered. <laughs> Yeah, ironically, I, I saw that. Uh, it was on uh, online yesterday, and uh, it was about uh, how you know if you're taking the sport uh, more seriously than your child is, and it gave five uh, subsets of things <laughs> that you have to watch yourself. Like, if you're uh, more upset about it when you get home from the game than he is, and you know that uh, you might need to lay off a little bit. But it's uh, it's all in good fun down here, and uh, the kids really enjoy themselves. They're all volunteer coaches. We can't thank everyone enough. The parents, they're committed. They bring the kids to practice, and if we could, it would be great to see the season extended. Well, I I think it's a great thing for uh, just youth in the area. Um, I'm not going to ask you what the other four things are, just in case I would fall in that category. Instead, we're going to take a break and return here for uh, final stats of our game here at Mingus Union High School. This is Conwood Parks and Rec Division Two Boys Basketball. This is our second of two games. We'll, we'll return right after this. The Cottonwood Recreation Center is proudly operated by the Cottonwood Parks and Recreation Department. The rec center offers a full fitness center, gymnasium, game room, climbing wall, and an indoor pool featuring a water slide and lazy river. The recreation center has child care services for members. There are party and community meeting rooms available for rent to the public. Visit the Cottonwood Recreation Center today or call 639-3200. Hi, this is Travis Reed from Larry Green Chevrolet in Hyundai of Cottonwood. We're known as the people place, and whether it's our involvement in the community or our customers that visit our dealership, we make it a priority to keep that reputation. If you're in the market for a new or pre-owned car, truck, van, or SUV, you'll find that we have the largest selection of new and pre-owned vehicles around, and our sales team is professional and courteous. Visit Larry Green Chevrolet in Hyundai of Cottonwood, two dealerships, one convenient location, just off Highway 260 next to Walmart in Cottonwood. Back here at Mingus Union High School, the second of our two games here for Conway Parks and Rec Boys Power Division 2 and the Ducks victorious 23 to 15 as we take a look at uh, the scores leading all scores here tonight. Number four, Marky Lopez uh, with eight points for the Sun Devils also on his squad with five points uh, was Kiros and uh, adding two points in the game was Hammer Jackson. Cody had quite a few shots especially in the lane, couldn't get anything to fall out there and uh, on the other side of the ball, the Ducks Ducks victorious here tonight, led with six points by Jordan May, who ends up their leading scorer for the game. All six of those points coming in the second half. Uh, Linares ends up with five points for the Ducks, two points going out to uh, Blatcher, and two points for Josh Connors, four points here tonight for Alexis Gill, their uh, prime prime premier 
point guard. Four points out here for Carson Anderson. Both of those buckets in the first half. He didn't score in the second half, but he was an absolute rebounding machine on both ends of the boards primarily the defensive boards out here today. So the Ducks end up going 4-1 and one on the season. The Sun Devils fall to 1-5 and five on the season. Hey, we are really glad that you were able to join us here. If you're looking for a copy of this game or the other game, uh, which was previously recorded with the Jayhawks and the Wildcats, you can email Ryan at MyRadioPlace.com. Ryan at MyRadioPlace.com. And uh, we can work on getting a copy for you. Otherwise, if you're looking for other airtimes here on Verde Valley TV, Cable 1, Channel 2, Sudden Link, Cable Channel 4, then you can check on, on online at VerdeValleyTV.com. That's going to be a wrap here for our Parks and Rec uh, premier uh, games of the week, if you will, out here today with uh, Boys Division Power 2. We want to thank our sponsors, Larry Green Chevrolet, Cottonwood Hyundai, Taylor Waste and Cottonwood Parks and Rec. Of course, you can always stop by and find out everything they are involved in from volleyball going on, softball. There's always the swimming pool, lots of other teams coming around. And don't forget the Brian Mickelson run coming up April 21st. That's a wrap. I'm Jackie Bessler with Verde Valley TV.